Hello folks. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the uh, Revelation chapter 12 sign in the heavens. There's a fellow um, who's been uh, making videos about this for about, oh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years. <laughs> a long time. His name is uh, Scott Clark. Um, his channel is Eternal Rhythm Flow. And so many, many years ago, he... I, I remember some of the earlier videos that he made talking about this topic. And how he had gone into Solarium and he looked and he looked for this sign in the heavens and he thinks he may have found it and that would be this September 23rd, 24th that's coming up. I actually think he may be correct and so I want to point out the rest of the passage um, and what it would what it will mean if, if it is actually the sign in the heavens. Um, so the next verse says, she was pregnant, cried out in pain, and she was about to uh, give birth. Then the third verse is, then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. So, what does that mean? Um, that's actually the United States. That's the fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7 uh, that rises up out of the sea. Um, it's part of the sea beast. The sea beast is the United States. Um, Daniel chapter 7 describes four beasts. That's four stages in the growth of the government of the United States um, over time. And, and then Jesus returns and receives all glory and honor and dominion, that type of thing. Um, and that's in Daniel chapter 7. So that's in the Old Testament. It's a very cool chapter. Um, it's ironic that, you know, there's so many people out there and you hear it over and over again, the United States isn't mentioned, the United States isn't mentioned, the United States isn't mentioned. It is mentioned, okay? It is. It, it's, it's pervasive. <laughs> the United States is, is mentioned in the Bible, okay? Not by name, but I mean, it, it describes four stages in the growth of its government in Daniel 7. Um, the fourth stage is described in uh, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, it having ten heads or ten horns and seven heads. And so, what does that mean? Well, the United States has ten administrative regions. So there's fifty states, right? Well, for administrative purposes, uh, it's also divided into ten administrative regions. That that started in 1970s, and then more recently, in uh, I think it was 2010, or maybe it was, yeah, 2010, I think, uh, a council of ten governors was established over the ten administrative regions for continuity of government purposes. So in the event of a war, natural disaster, or economic crisis, those ten governors would have authority for continuity of government pur uh, purposes to um, allocate resources within their administrative region. And so they would coordinate with the other governors, basically, is the, is the thinking. And they're elected representatives, so you, know, you still have some semblance of democracy even in the uh, representation in, in that... Uh, and under those strange conditions that, that may come up for continuity of government purposes. When there's wars, natural disasters, economic crisis, that type of thing. So, the seven heads. What are the seven heads? Well, those would be the joint chiefs. There are seven joint chiefs of staff. Um, they are in charge of the vast military industrial complex. Um, they're generals, admirals, and they serve for a long time. Uh, many, many years. And... Um, they, of course, when they wear their dress uniforms, they have their hats with um, all, all, they're all totally um, decked out with, you know, what you could easily consider to be a crown. Um, and so it's a, a literal fulfillment of what's, what's going on. Um, and for, of course, for continuity of government reasons, uh, you know, the military, if there's ever like a war or a natural disaster or economic crisis, they may be called in, and of course they always have authority over the military, but in times of uh, you know distress, continuity of government reasons, uh, purposes, um, they may have war powers um, depending on whatever happens. You know, who knows what's going to happen exactly. But the point is, the fourth beast rises, that's described in Daniel uh, chapter 7, the fourth beast rises out of the... Um, out of the sea, and then eventually Jesus comes back. So the, this is the theme, right? Jesus is real, and he is coming back. That's the point of this video. Um, so, yeah. And, and I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow. 
Um, and I don't think, you know, I don't think it's going to happen on September 23rd, 24th that Jesus comes back. I don't think that there's going to be some kind of continuity of government issue, uh, war or natural disaster or economic crisis on September 23rd. No, I don't think that, but it's this, uh, there, it's really tightly bound in this first paragraph of Revelation chapter 12. You know, there's the sign in the heavens, and I, I don't see any reason to think that Mr. Clark is not correct about that. Um, and you know, you know, some of you are going to say, well, what about the trumpets? What about the seals? Did they happen? Well, you have to keep in mind, right, that the trumpets, the sixth trumpet, 200 million man army war, begins, right, with the sixth trumpet. And right after that, it says, people still do not repent, meaning that they do not recognize the seals, the trumpets, the bowls. It's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're, um, it, they, they don't repent because they don't recognize it, right? I mean, why else would people not repent? If you, if you, um, if you believed, you would repent, right? If you, um, yeah, I mean, if you had the information, you'd repent, wouldn't you? But even after the trumpets, people don't repent. So, you know, part of this, the reason why I'm doing this, sharing my views on this, is so that, you know, people can make better <laughs> make better decisions, folks. Jesus Christ is really is coming back. Um, so, yeah, so, so basically there's this, after September 23rd, at some point there's going to be a war or whatever. Uh, you know, and there's going to be wars, obviously. Um... And then there's the Sixth Trumpet 200 million man uh, army war. That's principally between China and India. But who knows you know, where the other nations will, will fall and uh, you know, get engaged in that conflict or not or remain neutral or whatever. Um, but that's going to be a big war, obviously. It's the Sixth Trumpet, uh, the worst war in the history of mankind. But it's between India and China. And so for the most part, the rest of the world is not necessarily going to be involved at all. Uh, they may, you know, Europe might remain neutral, the United States might remain neutral um, in that conflict. And it might go on for many, it might go on for a decade, two decades. You know, people have it, this idea that all these things in Revelation occur in seven years. That's not, it doesn't say that anywhere. It doesn't say everything in Revelation occurs in seven years anywhere in the Bible. Okay, there are seven year periods. The biblical calendar is in a seven-year cycle, so there's going to be seven-year uh, periods in the Bible. Um, that's how God designed a calendar. Um, and you can go back and look in uh, the Old Testament and look at the calendar system that, that God designed. Because when he comes back, we'll be using that <laughs> calendaring system, I'm pretty sure. Um, that will be the standard calendaring system when he comes back. That will be one of the more notable changes. <laughs> Um, and so, okay, so after the, basically, after you see these Council of Ten Governors and the Joint Chiefs, um, having war powers, probably, um, or having authority, and, you know, and this could also be related to some other, um, scriptural events like, uh, Israel being attacked and the United States defending Israel, um, those type of things. It, it could also, you know, be related to any number of things. But but the key point, I think, is this next verse where um, it talks about a third of the... or, the, you know, the next part here where it talks about a third of the stars um, falling from heaven. So, basically, this... Uh, I'll just read uh, verse 7. It says... And actually, I'll read the verse before that because it indicates it's going to be... A, it's going to, it's going to, this is going to occur over time. The woman uh, fled. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for twelve hundred sixty days. So, um, that's three and a half years, basically. And and so this this chapter is occurring over time. I mean, literally, it's telling you it's occurring over time. Um, but there's a sequence, and the sequence is uh, observable, 
And that same is true for the seals, trumpets, and bulls. The sequence is observable. And if you check my other videos, you can see that I've already um, correlated the seals and some of the trumpets um, with, with a, a, a logical chain of events that have already occurred. Um, and so, but here's the, this is profoundly significant, this next verse, because it says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. So profoundly significant, right? Because these angels are at least five, 6,000 years old, if not millions, billions, trillions of years old. We have no idea how old they are, how wise they are, how much knowledge they have. But they are a third of them are coming to earth. And they're not going to be under the same restraints, right? Because before this war, right, you basically have an employee dispute in heaven that's going on between, uh, between uh, well, basically, I guess a third of the angels. Uh, the devil is, you know, doing what he does, accusing and like in the book of Job, and you see the accusations that he makes against Job. And then he, he the Lord uh, gives the devil authority in Job's life. He allocates that authority over certain aspects of his life. And the, the devil complies with the constraints that the Lord places in his authority over uh, Job's life. And that's important to understand. That's how the world's been operating for thousands of years. Um, and so you've got an accuser, and basically there's this social... Uh, I don't know if I want to refer to it as testing or whatever, but there's this... Uh, it's, it's like semi-autonomous sentient life forms that would be like angels. They've been around for a long time, but so are people. You know, we're somewhat autonomous, but not completely autonomous from the creator, right? He created the air. He sustains the air. He created the sun. The sun's you know, is providing energy to the earth. We are dependent on God uh, for our existence. Um, but we have some autonomy in, our, in what we do. But that being said, he already knows the future. He's directing uh, everyone's paths uh, according to his will for everyone's lives. Um, and so we just, ha you know, what we can do is basically try and make better decisions. Uh, and, and part of that, of course, is having better information. So the higher the quality of the information, the better the quality of decision a person or business can make. And so um, that's why it's so important. And, you know, that's part of the reason why, you know, these governments, uh, they want to spy on everyone, so that they can make better decisions relating to those people uh, that they're spying on. Uh, but God, he doesn't, you know, he's got perfect knowledge. At least uh, God the Father does. Jesus doesn't know everything. That's a very interesting aspect of Jesus. He doesn't know everything. But it's like the whole universe is designed around him so that it works out. You know, what... He, what it works out perfectly. Um, it's kind of he's like the 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 fulcrum point of the universe um, and how everything was created and and it was created through him. So very interesting. Um, anyway, the times we live in, um, it looks like so. There's going to be a the beast rises. The fourth beast of Daniel rises. Ten horns, uh, seven heads. Um, it looks like 1260 days, something or other happens, and then, and then, uh, the devil and his angels are cast down to earth. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to be visible. More than likely, they won't be visible. This is Revelation chapter 12, and also by the time of Revelation chapter 16, it says mankind is still not repenting. And so that's in the bowls. So it goes seals, trumpets, bowls, and then it has chapters in between. 
So it'll have seals and then some interesting detailed chapters of things that you might be able to figure out what they mean. And then it'll go trumpets and then it'll have several chapters of things that you might be able to figure out what they mean. And then it goes bulls and then it has some following chapters and things that you might be able to figure out what it means. So the point I'm trying to make is these chapters occur or at least begin after the trumpets. The trumpets are in this case, or you know, the seals and then you know some detailed subset of information and then the trumpets and then a, several chapters of detailed subsets of information and then the bulls and then several chapters of detailed subsets of information but it it, it could you know this uh, six or 12 uh, uh, chapter 12 here could begin like at this at the 6th or 7th trumpet right but it doesn't it, it's occurring much sooner on because actually, um, after, let's see, Trump's is uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9. So then you've got um, chapter 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And so those are all talking about various things that are going on simultaneously, but that they begin uh, at least before the end, last trumpet, right? So it might be sometime between the first trumpet and the last trumpet is when those the subset of various events will begin. And then how long they continue? They could continue on until all the way through the bulls, until Jesus returns, potentially. So this is occurring over a large period of time, uh, the point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's not, not just seven years, um, but this is very, very significant um, in the sense that, you know, this ancient civilization that is the angelic uh, civilization is going to go through a um, civil war. And, you know, I don't know how much of a civil war to actually be, um, or how long their the fighting will take. Um, but, um, and the thing is, some people seem to think that, oh, well, all these angels are coming to the earth, it's going to be terrible. But that's not necessarily the case, right? Because these angels, they've been around for a long time thousands and thousands of years and they're not all mean you know what I mean they're not they're not all mean they just for whatever reason they were um, associating themselves with Satan and they got kicked out so it's a, a lot of them I would imagine won't be uh, causing too much trouble for people um, because you know First off, they're ancient beings, and, and people are just, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Um, so, I, I mean, probably not that interesting to a lot of the angels. People are probably not that interesting. Um, uh, so, and plus... Um, but there is some indication, you know, uh, Paul uh, indicates that, do you not know that you will judge the angels? Well, who, what angels are you going to be judging? You're not going to be judging the angels in heaven. So, okay, so some angels are cast down to earth at some point. Why are you judging them? Well, if they're going to be condemned and they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire, what's the point of judging them? Um, so there may, you know, obviously there is uh, rationally... Um, if there's going to be judgment, then that means that some of them are not going to be guilty of whatever they're being accused of. So, um, I my I tend to think that a lot of them are going to uh, you know try and remain neutral or um, resist the devil uh, of that one third. And so they have a situation where there's probably going to be a civil war within their civil war um, among the ranks of the angels that are cast out of heaven because a lot of them aren't going to be want to be cast out of heaven. They don't. In fact, they fight to stay in heaven. Um, but once they are cast out, you know they're going to have to make a choice: Are they going to continue to follow the devil to the lake of fire, or are they going to resist the devil? and try and uh, redeem themselves uh, before God, their Father. 
who created them, right? Um, so I don't think it's going to be this overt, you know, there's angels walking down the streets, they're 20 feet tall, um, they're, you know, they're just ripping cars in half. No, I don't, I don't think that at all. I don't think that's what's going to happen. First off, the, um, the devil, he operates, you know, by stealth, deception, um, and a lot of people don't even think he exists, right? So, um, he's probably not going to be overtly, you know what I mean, visible uh, to people, except for uh, maybe some of his servants that, you know, worship him um, and, and get their marching orders from, from Satan. Um, but again, he's not going to have the authority or the power that he used to have. Uh, so a lot of those people that actually have been believing in the devil and worshiping him um, because they thought they could gain from that relationship um, are going to find that, no, they can't really gain from that relationship because he no longer has uh, authority. Um, what he does, what, what he will have is uh, you know, some angels that will... Um, follow him, I would imagine, because, you know, they've been around for thousands of years, if not millions, millions, trillions of years, they're going to have a lot of intense, passionate, emotional relationships, and that's really the, the key to understanding, I think, the, after the resurrection, is, you know, people who get to go inside and live inside the New Jerusalem could, and eat of the Tree of Life can potentially live for millions, millions, trillions of years. A long time. People outside, they don't necessarily get to have access to the Tree of Life, so they grow old, and eventually they die. And they're cremated in the Lake of Molten Sulfur rather than have, um, like, tombs and graveyards and cemeteries. Because you can imagine, you know, something like a hundred billion people being resurrected at the resurrections. There's going to be at least two resurrections. The first one for the righteous. The second one is Judgment Day. And there's like a thousand years in between. There's a thousand year reign. So Jesus comes back, resurrects the righteous. And that's very interesting. It talks about, um, you know, this war between Michael and Satan and the angels. And that is mirrored in... Daniel chapter 12, and it talks in Daniel chapter 12 about the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the righteous, rather, and it talks about um, you know, there's a period of time, it's about three and a half years as well, so it's interesting that the time, the time periods here seem to line up fairly well, three and a half years, approximately. So, and then there's this war after three and a half years. So, uh, I mean, a war in the, in the heavenly realm between the angels. So, um, how many years after that war, you know, and after the angels are here until Jesus comes back? It could still be a couple decades. Um... You know, it says that the war, there's this war, and then there's the resurrection. So, these things are occurring over time, and, you know, the, the time scales involved with God, you know, who knows? It could be a very, you know, a long time. But, uh, you know, we're talking three and a half years here, uh, between events, maybe. Um, so, once you see that fourth beast rise, once you see... Um, Council of Ten Governors having authority. It's a little harder with the um, uh, with the Joint Chiefs because they always have authority, uh, and so um, it, it might not be as easy to notice when they have more authority. But when that Council of Ten Governors is activated, we you know we might know. They might tell us uh, when that happens. You know. So I'm gonna. I'll definitely keep my eyes uh, open. Uh, you know, looking for that. Uh, um, that's gonna be a major thing. I think that basically is yet another thing that proves that the Bible is true, and that God is real. And you know, I can go over a bunch of things. You know, with you.
and I have in my other videos, um, but this is something that's significant that's coming up in the next few years, and, and it really begins. And you know what else is very significant, of course, is the August 21st uh, eclipse. So that's over the United States, and, and then you have this fourth beast rising, right? So you've got this, basically, you know, it's, it's, an, it's announcing, you know, the coming of the fourth beast. Uh, that rises out of the earth. No, not no. It doesn't rise out. It rises out of the sea. Sorry. The actual beast that rises out of the earth is China and India. And the way that I can tell you that that is true is because China has already forced a billion people to receive a national identity card uh, that they have to carry around with them at all times in public. And on that national identity card, it has a national identity number which is actually a citizen identity number, which is a number for a citizen. That means to be 18 digits, so 6 plus 6 plus 6, count the number of the beast, or is the number of a man. And so they've already done that in China. A billion people have received uh, a mark. Now, keep in mind, you know, only about or 97 out of 100 people in China do not believe in Jesus Christ in any way, fashion, or form. Okay, so they are... Antichrist to begin with, um, and so them choosing to take a mark is not terribly surprising, um, given that they reject Christ to begin with, and the vast majority of them, 97 out of 100. Now the same thing is true in uh, India. In India they, they practice Hinduism, uh, again 97 out of 100 deny Jesus Christ, they are Antichrist in India as well. And so, um, what they've done in India in the last seven years, they've enrolled 1.1 billion people in a national identity card program, but that one has a biometric um, ID. So they are scanning the irises. It's a, it's, it's a mark for identification purposes in their, in their forehead, in their, among the, on their eyes. And so you have a literal fulfillment of the two-horned beast that rises up out of the earth in India and China. They're right next to each other. They share a common border. They, they joined an alliance that was conf a covenant that was confirmed with many uh, on Feast of Weeks 2009 that when they when they uh, met for the first time for the BRICS uh, alliance and then um, let's see what else yep yeah, so that's it I mean that's really it I think um, Best regards, folks. Jesus is coming back.